Hey guys, it's OCB Communications, and welcome to, well, new format of Talking Cinema. Now, Talking Cinema originally was, you know, recording with, you know, Cinema Blend, the page is up, you hear my voice and whatever, but I missed actual vlogs. I missed actual interaction with you guys. I missed actually, you know, I don't know, connecting in this way. And also partly because the, the videos that I did there, they just took up so much space. And not only that, it took a while to edit. And not only that, I started getting copyright claims. So I was like, okay, you know, might as well, you know. And also, I haven't done one in a while because I've been busy with school. But I'm done. I'm done with this term at Clark College. I got all 17 credits. So, yay, yay for me. But anyway, um, I got a lot of catching up to do. And to start off this new format, this new way of, of talking cinema, I wanted to look at a different site. So I decided to say, fuck Cinema Blend, because they have really, really shitty articles and shitty writers. Some of them are good, other ones are really bad, and I have no idea how they even have a job. And so I decided I'm going to check out Screen Rant. And so, it's perfect, actually. I rant a lot on these videos, so I'm going to check out Screen Rant. Um, so, anyway, the latest movie news here in Screen Rant is Jim Carrey is circling a new comedy called Deep Cover. Where, I guess, he's going to team, he's poised to reteam of Red Granite, the company that financed and produced the shitty Dumb and Dumber 2, for a comedy currently called titled Deep Cover. At this point, plot details for the film have not been released, but the story was pitched by Johnny Rosenthal, who previously wrote a draft of Bad Santa 2, and has an action comedy, Iron Jack, in development. Well, I don't know much about it, so don't really give a shit. It's probably going to suck, because something dumb or two sucked, and it really seems like Jim Carrey has lost his ability to be genuinely funny. He just lost that manic energy, he just can't. He can't get it naturally. It just seems like it just he just cannot. He's like he's doing a bad imitation of himself. That's what I felt like watching uh, Dumb and Dumber Two. Watching Jim and Carrey, Jim Jim and Carrey. Watching watching Jim Carrey do a bad imitation of himself. Um, Spectre, the new James Bond film, which I'm looking forward to. It seems like well, the filming is not on hold because the Sony hacks have not stopped it, which is good. It's still continuing production. There's some new set photos with Daniel Craig looking pretty dapper. And, but Sony did, so there, you know, here's going to be my little rant on Sony's, the Sony hacks. Okay, Sony got hacked recently by somebody, supposedly somebody in North Korea, but I don't know, North Korea doesn't look like a country that has that much of a technology to be able to do this. So it wouldn't be surprised if it came from China or even from our own country. But anyway... But it could have come from North Korea. But anyway, what I'm saying, it, when, when Sony got hacked, all these emails were leaked and information. It started out kind of funny, whatever. Like, don't release the interview, the new Seth Rogen movie, because it's we don't, you know, we don't like it. It's making fun of us, or blah 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 blah. North Koreans were kind of upset about it, and so Sony, of course, laughed it off. Ah, ha ha! No, we're still releasing the movie, and then it got really serious. Where the hackers started releasing emails uh, from Sony, Sony's, you know, started leaking emails from Sony and started uh, putting a, a identity thefts, pretty much stealing identities. And one of them was actually Sylvester Stallone, which I'm like, well, Sly, you know, I, I I can't even condone that. As much as Sly has fucked it up lately, I cannot even condone that. That's going way too far. So, but here's my thoughts on the first on just the hacking, Sony. Why did you let a hack happen in the first place? If I was up, if I was up head up, if I was one of the higher ups of Sony right now, I'd be cleaning house. I'd be firing motherfuckers right and left, and I'd be hiring new people who know what the fuck they're doing. If they haven't been fired, it, you know, if, if Sony hasn't fired people already, I'd be shocked. Because how do you fucking let this shit kind of? How do you let this happen? How do you not have the proper protocols? How do you not have the proper defense systems on your computers to prevent hacking? How do you how do you not do that? Are you that naive? It seems like Sony was that naive. They're like, well, we're not going to get hacked. And then when they get hacked, it's too fucking late. So, 
and not only have this sort of thing going on here with the hacking, now it went too far where the, the hackers threatened 9-11 style terrorist attacks on theaters that would release the interview. And Sony caved. Sony bitched out and pulled the film from every theater. And at the same time, I'd be like, okay, I can understand where you're caving in on not releasing in theaters. But to me personally, uh, it's being a bit of a hypocrite. Because what I'm saying with hypocritical, it's being hypocritical because remember when The Dark Knight Rises came out and there was that tragic shooting at Aurora? Warner Brothers didn't pull the film from every theater, and that there actually was a, an attack in a theater where some, where some crazy fucking asshole gunman shot a bunch of people in a theater showing The Dark Knight Rises. But that movie was not pulled from theaters. Team America World Police, which had some of the same sort of material, was not pulled from the theater. Saddam Hussein, movies that made fun of Saddam Hussein were pulled from the theater. Hot Shots Part 2 wasn't pulled from the theater when it came out. That's what I'm saying. It's being a bit hip. And I think the main reason was not because of the controversy. It's because Sony was afraid. Sony was afraid that there would be even more damage done to their already damaged image because their emails got leaked that proved that they're a bunch of incompetent fucking at idiots who were behind, who are producing these movies. Because it proved, it showed that they are a bunch of fucking idiots. It proved how stupid they are with their ideas of an Aunt May movie. It proved how stupid they are with firing Andrew Garfield because he had the guts to stand up for your bullshit. And possibly because Andrew Garfield might be part of Marvel. Well, I mean, not Spider-Man would be. Not Andrew Garfield. Because for some reason, even though Andrew Garfield nailed the character, had passion for playing Spider-Man, was the best Spider-Man to date on film... He's going to get fired for two reasons. He stood up to Sony, didn't show up to some dinner because they fucked into him and his film over, Amazing Spider-Man 2, which I still like. I don't care what anybody says. I still think it's one of my favorite films of the year. It has its flaws, but it's entertaining. And it has the best Spider-Man I've ever seen on film. That's not the best Spider-Man movie. I give that to Spider-Man 2, but it's still a good movie, despite its flaws. I think, I think the haters of Made in Spider-Man 2, personally to me, went a bit overboard. If you don't like the movie, that's fine. But the whole, it sucks because Electro doesn't have a good motivation is bullshit. I'm sorry, I, I personally think that's bullshit. Because if you've ever read the comic, Max Dillon didn't have much of a motivation in his first appearance either. And the motivation here was just he was, he was a mentally challenged person. He got, he was picked on by all these people. He becomes Electro. He's dealing with being mutated into some, you know, something that's completely inhuman. And Spider-Man is almost able to talk him down. And then the cops shoot him. And then in his already messed up state of mind, that makes him flip out. He has a mental breakdown. And he goes after Spider-Man. He wants to kill him. It happens, folks. Mental breakdowns happen, folks. Like They happen like that. It does. It really does. I know somebody in my family who had a mental breakdown. It happens. It happens out of nowhere. So that's what happened with Electro. Oh, his motivation wasn't good enough. Well, he's supposed to have a relationship with Peter? Like, I don't understand what the fuck... But that's a whole other story. I've, I've already ranted on that in my review of the film. But getting rid of Andrew Garfield so Spider-Man can be a part of Marvel... So he can be in Civil War is not my idea of a good thing because I hate Civil War. I fucking hate that comic series because I think it personally sucks ass. That's the comic series that made me give up on Marvel Comics. And I haven't read a single new Marvel comic since because it pissed me off so much. It was a stupid cash grab idea. It was like we ran out of ideas here, so let's pit superheroes against superheroes. Captain America gets, America gets assassinated in that series. Captain America has to fight Iron Man. Which I even told this to my own mother. And she's like, that's lame. Exactly, that's lame. Spider-Man gives his identity away to everybody. Which defeats the purpose of him having a secret identity in the first place. Because if he didn't keep a secret identity, his his family and his friends and his, and his girlfriends would have been killed a long time ago. This whole bullshit of the government forcing heroes to register or some shit 
is stupid, and it literally just feels like they just copied subplots from an X-Men comic story arc and just threw it into the entire Marvel Universe. It seems lazy, Penance is a shitty villain, and it's a shitty series, and I am not looking forward to that film. And so it's, it's like a double-edged sword here for me. It's like, okay, Andrew Garfield, I like Andrew Garfield. He's going to get fired, and somebody and Marvel's probably not going to bring him back, so he's going to be replaced by some guy who probably doesn't have as much passion as Andrew does for the character, isn't nearly as, good, isn't nearly as perfect for the role, and Andrew Garfield needed better writers. It didn't need, it didn't need to replace him. He just needed better writers. Even I admit it made it Spider-Man 2 has its issues. I admit it. I still like the film. I think the issues are a bit overblown, but I still like the movie. But I admit it has some problems, and it could have been tightened up and even better with better writing. So get better writers. Don't fire Andrew Garfield. And Marvel, if you're going to get Spider-Man, bring him back. Who the fuck else is going to play him? We're going to get some other random no-name guy who... I, I, I mean... And then we're going to reboot the franchise again? I'm not happy about that. I'm not happy about losing Andrew Garfield for Spider-Man being back to Marvel so he can be in the shitty Civil War movie. I'm not, I'm not a fan of that. And so going back to Sony in the interview, I don't have a... It's just a hypocritical thing, okay? All these other movies have happened and there's been problems, but they still got released. But this is the one where you're like, no, because you fucked up, you didn't have the proper protocols and the proper defense system set up against a hack, and you should have done that in the first... This is what pisses me off about Sony, is because they got hacked before! They got hacked before! This isn't the first time that Sony got hacked! Remember when their PlayStation Network got hacked? What, when the PS3 was like, recently? Was it like a couple years ago? And you still don't have the proper defense systems and the proper protocols set up to prevent hacking? What the fuck is wrong with you, Sony? You fucked up, you had somebody hack you before, and then you let it happen again? <laughs> and now you want to pull a movie from theaters, a movie that some people actually wanted to see, because you fucked up. Not because of this bogus 9-11 terrorist attacks. There's no fucking way that these stupid hackers could have done anything. And even the, our own government said that the chances of them doing jack shit was very slim. So, if even our own government is saying we're not worried about that. That's just a bunch of bullshit. Just like any internet troll. Pretty much what Sony did is they just let the internet troll win. They let the troll win! They gave them what they wanted. They didn't fight. They took the fall. Or they just, they quit. They said no mas. They said no mas and they quit. And I guess taking it out of theaters, okay, fine. Interview not being in theaters is okay. I can deal, I can, I can deal with that. But this, no video on demand. No DVD or Blu-ray release. That's bullshit. And that's what's pissing me off. That's like, no, we're going to throw $44 million away and the people we're going to sell the people who did want to see the movie to fuck off because of some, it, some people in some country who did some hacking on our shitty network who we did nothing to fix after we already got hacked before. So we're going to make the, 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 you know, the public suffer. And I'm like, you fucking bitches. You're a bunch of fucking bitches, Sony. Release the goddamn movie on demand. There's not a single fucking thing these stupid hackers can do to people who buy the movie on demand. There's nothing that they can do. There's no way they can track how many copies somebody's bought on demand and release it on DVD and Blu-ray. And I don't know why they wouldn't. You know what? You make a lot of money because it's a movie that got pulled from theaters. But whatever happens in the interview is whatever happens. But I do not believe that it should never be released. That's bullshit. That's a bunch of fucking horse shit. And that's a slap in the face 
to the people who worked hard on that film, the Seth Rogen and James Franco, for the directors of the movie, for the for the people who worked on the set, for the people who put their hard work into the film, to basically tell them, fuck off, no one's going to ever see your film. They get paid. I understand they already got paid for their work. But it doesn't mean that it should never be seen. Because of some internet hackers that you bitched out, Sony, and you just literally like, oh my god, they're going to cause 9-11 attacks on theaters. And you saw that, if you seen they're actually leaked... I mean, when they, when they typed that thread in, they couldn't even spell it correctly. It was totally fucking internet trolls. And Sony pitched out and just did and just said, no mas. That's what I'm going to say. Fuck Sony, then. You're a bunch of fucking bitches. When going gets tough, you get going. You get the fuck out of there. You don't even stay for the fight. You don't go all 15 rounds. You bitch out. And this is another reason why, personally, I would love, and especially these leaked emails and stuff, and just seeing all of it is ridiculous. Like, Sony, what the fuck are you doing? And it makes me, and still not fucking fixing your system that got hacked earlier, makes me think that, honestly... I would rather have a cinematic world of films where there are no more major studios. I'm serious. I would be fine with all of them crashing and burning and falling apart and leaving the independent film industry left. To pick up the pieces and to deliver films to us. Because independent film industry, for me personally, has been kicking the fucking major studio films as asses for five years, if not longer than that. Most of my most of the favorite films that I have this year, since my favorite film this year is John Wick, and that got a um, um, that was pretty much an independent movie that somehow got a, a wide theatrical release. And deserved to make more money than fucking Ouija did, but it didn't. But that's what I'm saying, is that that movie was somewhat of an independent film, and it's my favorite movie of the year. There's some major studio movies I like, like Edge of Tomorrow, or Guardians of the Galaxy, or, or Captain America, but Winter Soldier. But when I'm thinking about it, with these Marvel films, they might be even better if they're left to an independent film company to do them. Because there's no more studio interference. You could make an R-rated Daredevil movie. You can make an R-rated Wolverine film. You could see those. You could see the R-rated Deadpool movie. Because the studio isn't poking their stupid fucking heads in the way. I'm all for it. I'm all for a future of no major film studios. If that means that I can't... Oh, no James Bond movie... Well, so, some of this stuff will still end up being made independently. There'll be a demand for it. It's just the major studios won't have the rights anymore. In my opinion, they deserve to crash and burn. They deserve to fall. For all of the mistakes and all of the shit that they have fucking done. For all the fucking ways that they have wasted money. For all the fucking ways that they have told their audience to fuck off. In my, in my opinion, they deserve to fall. A fall's been coming, and it's been a well-deserved fall for a long, long, long time. Hollywood can burn, for all I care. And leave the independent film companies to rise up from the ashes and deliver genuinely unique, fun, and well-made, well-acted, well-done films that don't have studio interference. Especially interference from a bunch of fuckheads who don't know what the fuck they're talking about. We have producers that are involved in producing movies that are complete fucking idiots. Who don't deserve to be producing movies because they don't know how fucking movies work or what makes a good movie good. But these fuckheads still get work because they have 
the they have you know because they're they're in that position and some of them don't deserve to be in that fucking position in the first place but that's just my my opinion I would love for these studios especially the, I would love for Sony to be the first one to fall they've been fucking things up they've been doing stupid shit for a long time I, I'd be fine with them falling. I love the 22 Jump. I love the 21 Jump Street series or whatever. Somebody else can pick up the rights. I would be fine if Sony fell flat on their fucking face after this and ended up losing a lot of money or the hacks fucked them up and made fucked them up so badly that they could not continue to function properly and they had they have to shut their doors because they've been fucking up with their video game systems, they've been fucking up with their games, they've been fucking up with the movies, and they're dumb enough to not fix their fucking internet, to fix their, you know, fix their fucking computer system after it was hacked once, so they can fall. They can take a tumble. Some other studio can come up and take their place. But just me personally, I know a lot of people might not agree with me, but in my opinion, the independent film industry is honestly putting out way better product than the mainstream and the big main studios are. And if that's the case, then they deserve to get put up on a pedestal instead of these underachieving, underperforming, Piece of shit fucking companies that get by because of the past money that they made. They made so much billions of dollars in the past that all they need is one hit and they're they're fine. Some of these companies are just shit and haven't made really good movies in years, and still people give them fucking money. You have shitty direct-to-video quality movies like Ride Along make a hundred million dollars. You have Annabelle, which is a really generic fucking horror movie, makes two hundred and fifty-two fucking million dollars worldwide. That's one of the most successful horror films of all time. This shit is pathetic. There's nothing that I can do about it, but I at least I can speak my mind. At least I can go out there and speak to you guys and say there's something wrong with the picture here there's better movies that are released independently that get nowhere near of a wide release as shit like fucking Ride Along or Ouija and they don't get that and they deserve it ABC's a death fucking deserved a wider release I mean, that's just, there's a, ABC's a deaf too. Yeah, ABC's a, even the first film, even as flawed as it was, is better than the other shit that we've got in the horror genre. Past five years. Mainstream. I can think of The Conjuring. And that's it. That's all I can fucking think of. Because Sinister sucked ass. Purge sucked. Insidious I wasn't the biggest fan of. Didn't even bother to see the sequel. Or maybe the collector movies, but I haven't seen them yet, so they might be up there too. But there's Slim Pickens in the horror genre in the mainstream. The best of horror films are independent. But that's just how I feel. I don't have much hope for the mainstream anymore. I have a lot of hope for the independent film industry because it keeps surprising me every year. Like films like Extraterrestrial, Wolf Cop, and... and, and um, As Above, So Below, even though that was released by Universal... It was technically an independent movie. Which was distributed by Universal. John Wick was an independent film, but it was just distributed by by um by um I don't remember who distributed John Wick, but it was distributed by a major film studio. So yeah, I mean, I'd be fine. Crash and burn. Fall down. The independent film industry take its place. Anyway, um, new Raptors. You want to hear my thoughts on Jurassic World? I'm not impressed. I was not impressed with that trailer. Everybody was jizzing their pants, and I was like, 
Okay? Chris Pratt looks like he's forced to be serious, which is not the right approach. He's not, he's not a guy who's going to be a serious... You know, they're trying to make him like Alan from the first movie, and it just doesn't work. He's not a serious act. He's more he's more comfortable when he's being a wisecracking guy like he was a Star Lord in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. And it's just the CGI, it's unfinished. I don't, I don't, I'm sick and tired of hearing that, honestly, from people. Saying that, you can't judge the trailer with its unfinished effects because they didn't finish it yet. Then why the fuck did you release the trailer with shitty unfinished effects? I'm serious. I'd rather have no trailer and wait for another month or two to make it so it has finished effects rather than see a trailer that has shitty effects. I, I, I'd rather wait. So the CGI in Jurassic World looked like shit. Oh, it's a, it's a mutant dinosaur. I saw that in The Relic. If I want to watch that, so I'll watch The Relic. It's a better probably be a better movie. And I didn't ask for another Jurassic Park. I didn't want another Jurassic Park. But here we go. And it sounds like it's the same fucking movie as the first film. Instead of one one kid, one boy, and one girl, it's two two boys and they're lost in the park. And you have one guy, Chris Pratt, is basically Alan. And then you have one one girl who probably is basically Laura Dern. And, and then they just got to save the kids and stop the dinosaurs from eating them. The only thing that seems like it's going to be different is that the dinosaurs, for some reason, are able to be controlled by some computer chips or something that's in their heads, like it's fucking Westworld. And... Chris Pratt has a bunch of dinosaurs with them, like it's fucking dino riders going around, you know, on motorcycles and shit at the end of the trailer. And where's the practical effects? I even heard uh, the director saying there's going to be more practical. I don't see it. Was it covered up by CGI by the fucking producers? Like what they did with the Thing prequel? Like what they did to uh, Amalgamate, uh, uh, that was like a ADI? Tom Woodruff and, uh, yeah, to, the, what they did to those guys, Tom Woodruff and company, they fucked them over. They did great effects for the Thing prequel, which might have been, I still was a shitty movie, but at least I could say, man, that had some great practical effects. I wish it was in a better film, but it had some great practical effects. But no, they covered it up with shitty CGI. And I've heard people say, there's a real door at Jurassic Park or Jurassic World. And then where is it? Why is the CGI in the trailer? Well, because, uh, yeah, Why? There's no reason you could have done one shot for the trailer that was in the fucking real door. What, are you keeping that as a surprise for the actual film? I wouldn't be surprised if there was a real door and then the studio just covered it up with CGI. Which defeats the purpose of building a real fucking door. Just like with ADI and the Thing prequel, defeats the fucking purpose of spending all the money on practical effects and then telling the company to fuck off and covering it up with CGI. It looks like shit. But anyway, that's just, you can tell I'm heated about this. And Jurassic World, why, why is the park still fucking open? After lawyers got eaten and people got fucking killed and shit, and the T Rex escaped and terrorized downtown San Francisco, why the fuck is the park still open? But, you know, I'm not impressed. I was not impressed with that trailer. And I was even less impressed with Terminator Genocides. That trailer was fucking ass. That was a fucking terrible fucking trailer. And that's one that had effects that looked like they were from the sci-fi channel. Produced by the Asylum. That movie looked like a fucking miniseries. Like a really cheap ass miniseries on the sci-fi channel. And more again, people come out with fucking excuses on their little keyboards saying, The effects aren't finished yet. That's a shitty excuse. Finish the fucking... Wait! Studios, don't release a fucking trailer that has effects that look like the fucking Invisible Man from the Sci-Fi Channel years ago. Especially on the T-1000, the Quicksilver effect. Don't, don't give me that shit. It was fine back then in the late 90s because it was a low-budget TV show.
There's no excuse for this $100 million production or some shit with effects that look worse than or just about as bad as the Silver Surfer did in Rise of the Silver Surfer. The T-1000 in 1991 looked better. And that was in the infancy of CGI. That's pathetic. It's unfinished. Don't give me unfinished shit! <laughs> I don't understand why some people are... It's excuses. That's what people are doing. They're giving excuses for shitty trailers with shitty effects in them. I'm sorry. I'm not buying the excuse. You're full of shit. It's shitty CGI. Don't give me shit. Is that too much to ask? Don't give me shit. Okay? Because I, I'm one of those that believes that a trailer is supposed to sell you on the film. It's supposed to make you want to see the movie. That's what a trailer is for, folks. It's not there to do anything else other than be a preview. A trailer. A way to hook you. A way to make you want to see the movie. A way to make you want to pay for it. But all you hear, if somebody happens to like it, not everybody's like this, but a good amount of people are just, if you don't like it because it affects, you're a moron because they didn't finish it yet. It's unfinished effect. And I'm like, excuses, 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 excuses. You wouldn't want shit either, now would you? No, nobody wants shit. So, I'm not going to accept it. I'm not going to look at a shitty trailer from Terminator Genocide with shitty fucking effects. And I'm not going to give it a pass and say, Well, the effects aren't finished yet. i got to give it a chance to tell the team a trailer where the effects are finished. The effects should have been finished in the first place. You're trying to sell people on your movie. Don't just throw shit out there and just be like, Hey... This is what it is. Effects aren't finished yet, but this is what we got. I'm like, this isn't a Kickstarter. You might have an excuse for that if you're doing a Kickstarter campaign, but this isn't a Kickstarter campaign. This is a $100 million movie that's already been ma being made or is being made right now or is already finished, and this is what you give me. I'm sick of the excuses, and I'm not fucking buying them. I'm not speaking for everybody here, but I swear to God, I think a lot of people don't actually appreciate film. I think they become complacent. I think they have just pretty much some people nowadays, since the advent of the internet, the advent of torrents, the advent of cams getting leaked on the internet, the advent of, you know, DVD quality, Blu-ray quality rips getting on the internet. The, ad the ability for these people to get it for free has made a lot of people in the United States and the world complacent when it comes to films. Because they don't necessarily appreciate them as much as they should. They don't see them as something that is a rare opportunity anymore. They don't see it as something that should be, I don't know, in some way, some, some sense respected. They see it as any sort of, you know, typical whatever sense of entertainment that could just be watched once, thrown away, rinse and repeat. And to me personally, it's sickening to see this. Because I am a huge enormous fan of film of all kinds of film of all kinds of genres and to see the quality of filmmaking the quality of films go down to the bottom of the barrel like it has recently and you're getting direct to video quality movies getting put on move on, on giant movie screens and cineplexes and are making millions of dollars sickens me because it makes me realize the sad truth that not everybody but a lot of people don't 
really necessarily appreciate the films that they are seeing. Because when you hear people just say, oh, it was all right, or it, it was, you know, people say stuff like, oh, you know, this sucked, this sucked, this sucked, this sucked, but I didn't hate it. When you hear stuff like, I'm not speaking about anybody personally. It's just I don't understand why you can say something like that and then not hate something. If this sucks and this sucks and this sucks and this sucks, then it's not a good movie. <laughs> then you didn't like it. It's okay, folks. It's okay in this internet age of basically just liking everything just for the sake of liking it and not wanting to get in a confrontation. It's okay to be honest. It's okay to say, you know what? That popular movie that everybody likes, I thought it sucked. I thought it was a shitty movie. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. It's who we are. Be honest. Make a stand. Go either say you like something or you don't like something. That's how I am. You either like it or you don't like it. If it's mediocre, fine. But don't have this attitude that you don't not hate anything or don't not like anything, any movie that comes out, there's something that you have to not like. Just in everything in life, you can't be like, I love this and I love this and I love this, but there's I, I love everything. Just like you can't be like, I hate everything. And I'm not like that. I like a lot of things. I have liked it. Actually, honestly, when I counted up the amount of movies that I liked this year, it actually outnumbered the amount of movies I didn't like. Well, I haven't seen as many movies this year that came out this year but that's what I'm saying is it, it's kind of interesting but those movies that I didn't like were some of the worst I've ever seen so that's what I'm saying like the worst is some of the worst ever lately and the best some of it's just okay it was entertaining it was fun but at the same time it's like it's not really in my top 10 it's not my favorite movie Edge of Tomorrow and John Wick are two movies that I could probably say that really did raise the bar for me I like Guardians of the Galaxy. It was entertaining. It was a fun movie. Is it a film I put in my all-time favorites of all time? No. It's one of the better movies of the year, though. But, um... That's what I'm getting at. Is it's, just, it's just how I feel. I love this. I love cinema. I love films. And I just feel there's way too many people, especially on the internet, who don't appreciate them enough. Because they're so used to them being there. And some of them don't have to pay money to see them, so that makes it even more of a lack of empathy towards film. Because they don't have to pay for it. They don't have to pay seven, ten bucks or whatever to go in theater. They can download it off a torrent. That doesn't help that this disturbing trend of this generation, and I'm not speaking for all of you, there's a lot of people in this generation who do not agree with the way things are going, but it's a disturbing trend because it's that's what I'm saying, it's this complacency. It's this, well, it's better than nothing. I'm sorry, we're not, the film, film industry, films in general, are not food. Okay? They're not food. Millions of dollars are spent on films. Millions of dollars, again, somewhat, in some ways, is some of the time spent on food as well. But what I'm saying about it, you don't spend millions of dollars every year, every, every year on food, do you? Unless you make millions of dollars, you can spend millions of dollars on food. But do you see what I'm talking about? Having this attitude of, oh, it's better than nothing when it, come, it comes to movies is disturbing. If we have that attitude, if a majority of us who are going to movie going public begin to take on that attitude, the quality of films will go down even further. It will get worse and worse and worse 
and worse. And it already is getting worse and worse and worse because of this complacency, because of this, oh, it's better than nothing. So shit is better than nothing. Yeah, it's better than nothing. We're not a starving country. Some of us are starving. Yeah, some of us are homeless and whatever. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. When it comes to films, films in the United States, we are not starved for films. So this attitude of it's better than nothing is not the right attitude to have when we are not starved for films. That's why it upsets me. Because this is disturbing. This is a bad thing. This is going to cause even more shitty direct-to-video style movies that get put into theaters because of this wide, agreed-upon attitude of it's better than nothing. I'm sorry, when it comes to films, I want more. I want the best that they can give me. I don't want the bare minimum. And I'm not going to accept the bare minimum. Just because it was better than nothing. I'd rather have nothing then. Because we are not starving for movies. Movies come out every week. Three or four of them come out every weekend, folks. Where did this attitude start? Where did it come from? I have no idea. And I just want to know how. I want to know where it started. So I could get back in a time machine and stop it from ever happening. Because we as consumers, we as, as lovers of film, we as people who go and see movies and theaters didn't used to be like this. You didn't used to hear this widespread, it's better than nothing response. I'm sorry. It's how I feel. It's pa I'm passionate about film. And to see this attitude being accepted by a wide majority of people is sickening to me. If we were in a situation where films were scarce and there was only like two or three that came out every year, then you could have that ex then you could have that reason. Then you could say it's better than nothing. But that is not the case. If you count direct to video movies, you have hundreds, if not thousands, of movies that come out every year. So there is no excuse, in my opinion, to keep up with this. It's better than nothing bullshit. It's bullshit. It's a bullshit way to feel about the films today, and it's crippling the originality. It's crippling, crippling the uniqueness of films, and it's making studios realize. That they can make big bucks off of just putting out the bare minimum because a lot of people believe that that's better than nothing. And that is a shitty truth. It sucks. But studios will continue to do this until the public decides that they want something more. And if they don't, and if they keep making, keep throwing millions of dollars at half-assed horror films just because it's a horror movie and it's better than nothing, and if they keep throwing out millions of dollars to another Transformers movie because it's better than nothing. If they keep throwing out millions of dollars to some shitty direct-to-video comedy starring Kevin Hart it could, because it's better than nothing. You're going to keep getting the same fucking below average, below the barrel quality of filmmaking. You're going to keep getting it because that's what Hollywood thinks you want. And it's not what I want. And I honestly don't think that the people who do go see these movies really want below the barrel shitty movies either. But they become complacent. And that's the thing. If a widespread of people have this attitude of it's better than nothing or it's complacency, they've given up. 
They don't want to fight for good films. They don't want to fight for cinema. They don't want to fight for preservation of genuinely unique but also entertaining movies. They don't want to fight for it. And if this continues, there won't be enough people to left to fight the battle. There won't be enough people to fight anymore. And this trend and this cycle of unoriginality and sequels and prequels and remakes and and all of this will continue and it will not end until we as a movie going populace stand up and say we want more from you we no longer want the bare minimum we no longer want it's better than nothing we want more and that's how films get better that's how movies become better that's how we get better films it's because we want better from them. We want more. We want better movies. But if a, if this populace continues to adopt this attitude, we're not going to get better movies. We're going to get the same. Below the barrel quality of films. So my, my thing here is stop being complacent. Stand up for how you feel. Whether it's negative or positive, I don't care. Because films are, are something that should be cherished. Films are something that should be respected. Films are something that should be appreciated. Not thrown away. Not treated like it's some bowl of cereal or something that we eat and we can just do whatever. It's not treated like like a, a fucking junk food snack because I'm sorry films aren't just a bunch of junk food to me you can eat it and it makes you feel good and you throw it away to me great films can be loved and cherished over and over and over and over again and there's some there's feelings that you can get with films that you can't get any other way they can bring out emotions they can bring out memories they can bring out things that no other format can bring and if you just, just act like it's just junk food it's just fast food then the quality is gonna give it's gonna go to shit and films never used to be like that and it just keeps coming it just keeps happening because not enough people are speaking up none of the people are speaking up to Hollywood and not paying their ticket and saying no I'm not doing this anymore so that's why that's why I have been trying my best to only see movies in the theater that I genuinely actually really want to see but when you get the movies like Godzilla to disappoint the fuck out of me when you see shit like Robocock when you see these movies that just I mean it just it just it makes you really it, it 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 hurts you if you're a lover of film because you're like is this it and you're fighting and you're trying and you're trying to be that guy you would stand up and not deal with this and and not take it anymore but you realize that you're outnumbered by this majority of people who are just sitting there with their thumbs up their ass not doing anything about it because it's better than nothing It's frustrating because you're passionate. If you're like me, you're passionate and you want to fight. And you want better films and you want better movies. But you feel helpless because of how limited you are how 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 limited you how limited you are when it comes to your ability to affect the situation. Because you're outnumbered. And it sucks. And you want to scream at the top of your lungs and be like, this is bullshit. No more. And there's not enough people that hear you. There's not enough people who listen. There's not enough people who do anything about it. 
that's why I've always said, and I've done it before in other rants, the only way that we can make it so better films get put in theaters, the only way that we can break this complacency, we can break this cycle of complacency, this cycle of unoriginality, is if we stand up, if everyone that feels the same way that I do just does not deal with Hollywood anymore. Says, okay, you want to give me nothing but shit and give me a few good movies there and every now and then? I'm not buying anything from you. I'm not paying for a single ticket. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing anything. Because you don't respect me. You don't respect my opinion. And if enough of us stand up and say, no more, then Hollywood will listen. Because it'll hurt their fucking bottom line. Because that's all they care about. They don't care about these producers at the big companies. They don't give a shit about originality. They don't give a shit about uniqueness. They don't give a shit about whether the movie's entertaining to you personally or not. They don't give a shit about the quality. All they care about is the money. Their bottom line. So if you hit them where it hurts the most, then maybe they will start to fucking listen for once. Maybe you get through their big, thick fucking skulls that what they're doing is not the right approach to have for films. I'm sick and tired of this junk food, fast food way of filmmaking. That's why I am boycotting Hollywood from now on. I'm not watching a... I'm not seeing a movie in a theater. I'm not doing it. The only time I see a movie in the theater will be an old re-release of something at the Hollywood Theater. Like if they're showing a, a release like a release like Monster Squad or again, I'll go see it then. But I'm not supporting any of their recent films, even if I want to see them. Because that's a sacrifice you have to make in order to make a difference. And that's what I'm going to do. I want to see Mad Max Free Road. I want to see Avengers 2. And if I do see any of that, I'm not paying for it. My parents want to pay for something, then they pay for it. I don't I'm not paying for anything. So if I do see anything, it wouldn't be my money going to, to Hollywood. It wouldn't be me. I'm not asking my whole family to join in on what I'm doing. But this is what I'm doing. I'm putting my foot down. I'm done. Enough. I'm sick and tired or tired of this these shitty movies. I will support the independent films. I will. I will support those movies. I will support those movies all the way. All the way. Because I feel that they are doing a better job. Because they don't have fucking morons, moron producers, getting in their way. Getting in the way of their vision. Getting in the way of what they want to do. Getting in the way, getting in the way of their passion. Getting in, getting in the way of their originality and what they want to bring to the world of cinema. Getting in the way of that. Because that's what the producers are doing. They're getting in the fucking way. So, Hollywood can bask and enjoy whatever, you know, they're reaping their benefits of fucking complacent audiences. And I'm just going to, I'm not going to be one of them. I'm not doing it anymore. I'm tired of being disappointed. I'm tired of being fucked over. I'm taking a stand. And I don't know if they'll listen. More than likely they won't. But at least I'm doing something. At least I am going to do something about it. It's the only thing that I can do. And if somehow more people decide to follow my lead cool but you can't change something if you just sit back and don't do anything about it so if I see a movie in the theater it would be an independent movie or something like I was saying the independent movie that gets released through a studio like I might I, I, I you know I might break down and I might see something but the but I will try my best to not do that. It's gonna be hard. There's a movie I wanna see. But the thing is, 
I don't want to support this anymore. I don't want to support a, a bunch of studios who don't give a shit about what I think. Who don't care about the people who pay them. The people who give them the money that they use for their jets and whatever the fuck that they use the money for. We are the reason why they make the millions of dollars. We are the reason. There's no other reason, there's no other person that's making them that money besides us, except for maybe some advertisers and whatever, whatever. But when it comes to a movie's gross, we are the people who make it. And they're not getting my money anymore. Because they don't deserve it. They don't respect me, so I won't respect them. So anyway... I just had to get that off my chest. It's a big, long, whatever. I know it's a rant on, on... It's this complacency. I had to talk about it. I had to get it out there. And you know what? I'm sorry if I offended anybody. It was not my intention. If you feel that way about some things, that's cool with me. But to me, that attitude is the reason why films suck. Because there's all these excuses that people are giving for shitty movies and shitty movie trailers. Well, a movie hasn't come out yet. You can't judge a movie by its trailer. People did that all the time back in the day. Before the internet. People judged the movie by the trailer. It happened all the time. Because that's what a trailer is supposed to do is make you want to watch the movie. But a lot of people don't fucking seem to know that for some reason and seem to act like that's not what it was meant for. But that's what a trailer is meant for. That's what a preview is meant for. There's no other reason for it to be there. It's supposed to get you to want to see the movie. But in the age of the internet, too many people are bitching about other people's opinions on something instead of actually arguing about the film itself or the trailer itself they're arguing about opinions instead of actually pointing their arguments and their point of views at the movie they're arguing about Dave's opinion they're arguing about Timmy's opinion or Matt's opinion or something or something but bitching back and forth my opinions better than yours da -da 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 -da, instead of point that argument towards the movie Don't be bitching about people who, oh, you don't like the new Star Wars trailer? Fuck you! Have some mutual respect for other people's opinions. Just say, okay, you don't like the new Star Wars trailers, it's fine. Just let me know why you don't like it. If I don't like the new, the new, the new uh, lightsaber, and then somebody, will, and then don't have the reaction some people do. Well, then you're a fucking idiot because it's not. It's in the. It's in the EU and. No, it's Star Wars. Fuck you. He's like, it's better than nothing. Cause you hear that all the time now, and that's what I'm fucking sick of. This complacency. This. Oh, it's a star new Star Wars movie. We should all be happy. No, I'm not. I want better. Want a better product from millions of that you know when millions of dollars are involved. If it was a low budget flick, I could give some pass to some low budget movies for doing their best, like Wolf Cop did the best it could some of the effects weren't that great but other effects were good and they I, I gave it I gave those a pat they gave it a pass because it did the best of what it could did the best with what it had there's no excuses for this other shit I'm not buying any more excuses I'm not taking it I see right through this bullshit there's no excuses for shitty trailers there's no more excuses for shitty movies. No excuses. Because it's better than nothing. It's bullshit. I'd rather have nothing, if that's the case.
because that's pretty much all that I'm getting lately anyway from the mainstream main studios so I'll take nothing and they will get nothing from me so anyway thank you for watching this this little it's not really it's a long rant on the state of of uh, cinema and films today I wore myself out here with this but I had to get this off my chest and I I hope I, I really did not mean to offend anybody by this it's just I'm, I'm being honest here I, I had to get this out there I'm being honest and this is how I feel I really really excuse me really really do genuinely feel this way about the future of cinema and the way things are going and I genuinely do not buy these excuses anymore and I don't buy this it's better than nothing attitude I don't buy it and um, if you do be my guest but if you don't and you feel that you wanna do something about it then I'd suggest you stand up too and you give Hollywood nothing right back. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys later. See you.